Welcome to Lifehouse Church Online. My name is Derek and I have the privilege of hosting today with my man Ben. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? I'm doing good, bro. Well, I believe Victorians now have got some exciting news on the table. We can actually start doing some stuff. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. I think there's been restrictions that have been able to ease, which has been good. I think we're able to go back into cafes. Yeah, that's awesome. Be able to have a coffee, learn what it means to be able to interact with people again, which is going to be a little bit strange. Retail is reopened, so Kmart. you got to love Kmart. Oh, Kmart, mate. You should see my kids. I mean, my son's got holes in his jeans and my daughter's uh, um, pants are coming up to above her ankles, mate. I feel sorry for him, but uh, it's going to be good to get them some new threads. And I finally took my son to get a fresh cut. Man, his hair was... I was literally putting him in the mop bucket and like using him for the floor. It was incre- it's insane. <laughs> but it's so good to be getting outdoors, getting some sunlight, getting some fresh air, connecting with people. And speaking of connecting with people, one of the greatest ways at Lifehouse we can help get you connected is through our life groups. Ben, I heard you recently started one yourself. Yeah, I did start a life group um, a while ago and it's been you know, really, really awesome to catch up with some guys, even though it's not face to face. But it's really been good to yeah, just spend some time with them, connect with them, just be able to journey in this season. So it's been great. And if you want to find any information, you can head to our website. That'd be absolutely awesome. Yeah, and over the month of uh, October, we've been partnering with our Lifehouse Kitchen uh, during our community meal drive. And I must say, it's been awesome to see the, the engagement that the community's had um, in getting behind our Lifehouse Kitchen. And it's been absolutely amazing. Um, and looking over this month, we've been able to raise over uh, 500 meals that we're going to be able to support our community with, which has been amazing. Absolutely. And incredible. so uh, that's going to be a massive blessing. Our Lifehouse Kitchen have been doing an amazing job in this season, being able to support our community, being able to meet the needs of people and just bringing care and support um, into homes, which has been absolutely amazing. That is absolutely awesome. And hey, I want to invite you right now. You know, every month we do we're going to a time called communion and it's a time where we get to remember Jesus so if you haven't got your elements right now if you haven't got you know something to drink or something to eat you know here's something I prepared earlier um, is I want to invite you because it's a it's a great time where we can get to celebrate the life death and resurrection of Jesus but hey have you ever noticed that in chaotic times when things get crazy how easy it is to forget you know, for myself, um, recently, you know, when before lockdown happened, when um, my son was at school, uh, I remember being in this crazy time, and I was had to go, um, had to be at certain appointments, be at certain places at certain times, and I literally forgot to pick my son up from school. That is a typical dad fail. But thankfully, my wife lives down the road. We got it all sorted. But it's amazing how, in times of chaos, you can really forget things that are so vitally important to you. And you know, there was a time where the Apostle Paul gets actually shipwrecked and things are going hectic, things are going crazy, people are panicking and he takes a moment to take communion. I want to read it for you here in Acts 27 verses 35 to 37. Look at this. It says, Then Paul took bread and gave thanks to God in front of them. He broke it and he began to eat. Look at this. There were 276 people who ate until they were filled and were strengthened and encouraged. You know, one of the great things about communion, about the bread that represents Jesus' body that was broken and the juice that represents his blood that was shed, it reminds you that even in the craziness, even in the chaos, he's still in control. He's still God and he's worth giving our focus, energy and our time to. So I want to invite you to take with us as we eat and drink together. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, thank you for the life you gave for us, Jesus, and your resurrection that gives us the power to live the life you've created us to live. In Jesus' name. Ben, would you take with me? Yeah, that's awesome. What an awesome communion message. And so, you know, if you're connecting with us for the first time, or maybe you've been journeying with us online for some time, you know, you can connect with us um, for our uh, multiple different digital channels that we have, either through our website, um, online through Facebook or Instagram. Um, we'd love to get in touch with you and, and hear a little bit more about your story. Um, it's been great seeing people connect in our, our community page on Facebook as well, and people being able to support each other um, in and through this season. And so, hey, if that's you and you want to reach out, um, we'd love to get in touch with you um, in, this, in this season. How good has it been people continually, faithfully giving into the vision and mission of this house? We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for continually to be faithful with that. And you know, we're about to head into a time of worship and then we're gonna hear a great message. But how many of you guys have been loving Ben? I'm sure you have that intimate worship where it's just, it's and they're going on different screens and hearing those beautiful voices come out and we get to engage in that together. And then we're gonna hear a great message from Pastor Richard. Enjoy.
Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever.
Welcome to Lifehouse Church Online. It is wonderful to be with you guys once again. And I know that for Victorians, we are enjoying this season of some easing of restrictions and some more to come. Hopefully today we find out a little bit more about what we can do. And uh, it is just uh, such a relief, isn't it, guys, to be able to get out and about and uh, do some of those things that we love. Well, we are into the second message of our series called Thrive, Don't Just Survive. And the heartbeat of this message, uh, of this series, is that we would begin to dream again. And uh, Helen spoke about that last week. And guys, God is not finished with us yet. And we need to be planning and dreaming and uh, having some vision for our lives for 2020. I mean, this year is not done yet, but we need to be planning for the future. And, and that's what we're speaking into because you know what, we don't wanna just go into survival mode and, uh, and just thinking about what's currently surrounding our lives. No, we need to be thinking outside the box and believing for some big things. So I want you to pay attention. I want you to open up your heart and, and allow God to do something in your life. And today, this, this second message, um, what I'm gonna be speaking about, in order to thrive, what do we need to do? Well, the title of this message is to, to Thrive, Stay Humble. Some of you are thinking, really? How does that work? Well, you're gonna find it in Philippians chapter two in a moment. But let's just back up. Last weekend, we saw the Richmond Football Club win the AFL 2020 Grand Final. And um, as some of you who would follow football, you would know that you know Richmond were doing quite well for some time, but, but they would get to finals and they just weren't able to go all the way um, and actually start winning some finals, find themselves in a grand final and win one. And so coming off the disappointing season in 2016, um, one of the players began to go on a bit of a journey and he read a book by a woman called Brene Brown. And some of us have heard of this woman. And I've actually got a photo to show you right now. And the Richmond Football Club began to read this woman's book. And the, and the book is a powerful book about vulnerability. And in that book, it talks about how when we become vulnerable, it does something really, really powerful. And it begins to open up your life and people begin to trust you. And so beginning with the captain of the team, he began to be vulnerable with his teammates about his insecurity that, that one of his um, offsiders or his right-hand man in the club had become injured. And because of that, he actually lost his confidence as the captain of this football team. And as he began to talk to his teammates and began to open up his life and humble himself in front of his teammates, one by one, they began to do the same thing. And by the end of that session and within the next month, and the next few months, there was a vulnerability and an openness between all of those people. And, and, and then eventually that began to build to such a point where the whole club was now impacted and had an honesty between themselves and that was building and building to the point where in the next few years, the next four years actually, that, that football team has won three premierships. And I just want to talk to us guys because I believe that that's that's what we call thriving. And it happened because our entire football club humbled themselves and became vulnerable and opened up their lives and stripped pride out of their way and look at the result that they experienced. And I want us to experience the same thing. You know, um, Jim Collins in his uh, bestseller called From Good to Great, he actually wanted to find out the X factor um, with 1,435 Fortune 500 companies, only 11 had sustained continual growth and success over decades. Out of 1,435 companies, only 11 had success over many decades. And so Jim uh, Collins studied these leaders of these companies to determine what made these companies so great. And you would be shocked as to what he found. This is what he found with every one of the CEOs of those 11 companies. Here it is. A deep sense of personal humility, doubt, and drive. Some of you may be thinking, doubt? Yeah, yeah, they were open to other people's opinions because they may be wrong. Friends, that's what we call humility. People love and respect 
humble people. They respect humble leaders because they make us feel safe. And, you know, this whole series is based out of the book of Philippians. And if you will just watch on the screen, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. If you've got your own Bibles, I would love you to read it in your own Bible if you could. Otherwise, just have a look on the screen. And it says this in the uh, NIV version. It says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Okay, so how did he think? Who being in the very nature, God, who did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, watch this, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now watch verse 19 kicks in. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. Whenever you see a therefore, find out what it's there for. The therefore God exalted him could only be said because of everything Jesus had done previously to that verse. Jesus humbled himself, became a servant, and when God saw that, he was able to exalt him. He was able to thrive. He was able to achieve everything that God had for him. How? Because he humbled himself. So here it is, friends. We all want to thrive in 2021. We want to move forward. We want to do great things with our life. Have we ever joined those thoughts that being humble and becoming a servant allows God to move us forward and to be able to exalt us? Friends, to thrive Stay humble. Turn to the people around you and say, to thrive, stay humble. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, I'm not sure that's true. Because if that was true, why aren't people more humble? If, if, if being humble and humility leads to greatness and causing you to thrive like the Richmond Football Club, then why aren't more of us humble? And I would say it's because many of us associate humility with weakness and an inability to stand up for ourselves. That's how most of us perceive humility, that it's something where we walk around and we are self-depreciating. And, you know, we see this in people. Sometimes you may see someone who's, uh, you know, sing singing a great song and, and maybe they're singing, you know, a, a solo item and they pound out this incredible song and then later on you go and say, hey, bro, that was a great song. And they go, it's not me, it's the Lord. That's what we think humility is. And let's be honest, when people do that to us, it, it really, it's, it's annoying. It's like, bro, I'm not trying to worship you. I'm just trying to encourage you. Like, just take it on board. And I think we've got a misunderstanding of what humility is. See, humility is not a facial expression. Yeah, that's what some people think humility is. When you sort of walk around and you sort of got this, I'm, I'm a boring person look about you. No, no, that's not what humility is. Or some of us think humility is a dress code where, where your fashion has to be at least 13 or 14 years old with a few holes in it. And that's what makes you humble. Like, look at that guy. Look how humble he is. Look how old his jacket is. No, that's not humility. Or, or, the, or the, the make of car that you drive. It has to be a really old thing that's half breaking down. And we go, what a humble guy. Well, if that's the truth, if it's about facial expression, and fashion and the type of car that you drive and if all of that has to be going downhill quickly to be humble why would anybody want to be humble that's not humility I don't know what it is you can call it whatever you like but it's not humility have a look what humility really really is the Bible talks about a guy called Moses many of us have heard about Moses and it says this in Numbers 12 verse 3 it says now Moses was a very humble man more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Wow, what a thing to be said about you. Now, what you may not realize is Moses wrote that. He wrote that about himself. And some of you are thinking, what? You can't say that about yourself and actually be a humble person. Well, yes, you can. Because Jesus himself did the exact same thing. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 Take my yoke upon you, Jesus says. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. You will find rest 
for your souls. So here's Jesus again doing exactly what Moses just did. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, I'm a really humble person. You know, imagine you walked up to somebody, hey, guys, I just want to tell you that I'm the most humble guy on the face of the earth. You'd go, bro, by you just saying that, it means you're not humble. Well, apparently not. Let me tell you what humility really, really is. It has nothing to do with those things we've already spoken about. Humility is a deep sense and an acknowledgement of who God is in your life. That's right. It's, it's the person who is completely aware that every gift, every talent, every breath that I take, everything that I own completely comes from God. It's the complete opposite of the person who says, I'm a self-made man. Really? How are you keeping your heart beating, my friend? Oh, I don't know how that works. Yeah, it's God. Where did you get your wisdom from? How did you become so intelligent? Besides the learning, the fact that you're able to learn, where did that come from? Now, it came from God. Humility is knowing that everything you have achieved has come from God. And the people that seem to get that, they seem to thrive. People that can take their eyes off themselves and they can put it onto God and to the people that have helped them to get to where they're going, that's the humble person. That's the person everybody wants to be around. That's the person that we are attracted to. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 says this. It says, in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. And here it comes. Wait for it. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Did you like that? God opposes proud people. He makes things difficult for them. In other words, actually, it's not that he makes it difficult for them. He just doesn't help them because they don't need his help. Remember, they're proud people. They don't give any credit to God. They don't give any credit to people around them. It's all about them. So God says, well, go ahead, just do it yourself. Now, when we all know when God's not in the picture, someone else is. <laughs> Did you get that? God doesn't bring evil into our lives. It's just that when he exits, then evil naturally comes in. Now, we need to be people who say, God, I need you. 2021, 20, Lord, I need you. God, I'm going to be honest enough to say I need good people around me. I need, I need my spouse. I need my children. I need my leaders. I need people. I love these people. And friends, when you have that sense of humility, get ready to start thriving. Get ready to start moving forward. Now, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says something that I would say is probably the knockout punch. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Now, let's concentrate on the first part. It says, humble yourselves. You know, God wants to lift you up, but we need to humble ourselves. Now, can I just talk about that for a moment? You know, I've been in church for a very, very, very long time. And, you know, I've maybe preached a good message once in a while, just once in a while. And, and, and I'll get off the platform and, um, and somebody will say to me, oh, that was a great message, Pastor Rich, or whatever. And someone beside them will say, don't say that. Don't say that because he'll get all proud. Hey, listen, it's not your job to keep me humble. Please do not make yourself the humble police. It's not your job to keep people humble. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And when you humble yourself, God promises to lift you up. James chapter 4 verse 10 says the exact same thing. It says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Whose job is it to be humble? Your job. Now here it is, friends. Often when we don't humble ourselves, then life will humble you. And I'm going to get into that in a moment. But come on, we need to be people that are willing to humble ourselves. And our job is not to humble anyone else. Our job is to encourage others. And if they get a big head, you know, in Australia, we say, oh, man, don't encourage them. They'll get a big head. I don't even know what that means. As, why would their head get bigger? But anyway, don't, don't encourage them too much because they'll get a big head. No, no, your job is to encourage people. It is to encourage your spouse, your partner. It is to encourage your colleagues and your, your work friends. And it is, that's your job. Their job is to humble themselves before God. God is looking for people who will humble themselves so that he can lift them up. Now, 
Let's just go a bit deeper. Why is humility so important in order to thrive? Because a lot of the things that God will ask you to do, if you don't have a humble spirit, you will not do it. Yet your miracle is waiting on the other end of your obedience. Some of us will remember the story when one of the disciples was in the boat and he was fishing all night. Now remember, these people were fishermen. This is what they did with their life. And then this person, Jesus, who is a carpenter, yells out and says, guys, throw your nets on the other side. And they yell, they yell out to him, but we've been fishing in all night. In, uh, all night. In other words, you're a carpenter. What do you know? We are fishermen. We think we should know what we're doing. Can you please not get involved in what we know to be right? But yet the Bible says they humbled themselves and they did throw the net on the other side and they caught some fish. Can I ask you a question? If they didn't have a humble spirit, would they have bothered to throw the net on the other side? And you know, some of you have been trying some things for a very, very long time. You've been dating the same type of person for a long time. You've tried to start businesses with the same type of people for a long time. You've tried a whole lot of things in your life and they're not working. Yet there is this voice that yells out to you to say, do it differently. But because it clashes with everything you know and you've heard and someone told you, we aren't willing to humble ourselves to listen to what God says. And so we do it our own way and we keep fishing on the wrong side of the boat for our whole lives and wonder why we never thrive. Friends, I want you to thrive, but you can't listen to God and have a, pr a proud spirit. You have to have a humble spirit. You know what? The truth is this, guys. You know, you know that earlier verse where it says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble? The, the, the truth is God doesn't resist the proud. They resist him. That's the honest truth. God's continually trying to reach out to us, but we just go, God, I don't want to hear it. No, I'm going to do it my way. It's not like see, God is trying to reach out, but the proud spirit never wants to receive the advice. See, back to that verse in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8, I think you can easily read over it, but it says, and being found in appearance as a man, it's talking about Jesus, it says he humbled himself, and wait for it, and became obedient. What, come, what came first, obedience or humility? Humility always comes first, and then obedience can take place. My desire is that by the end of this service, you're going to say, God, I want to be a person who is humble. I want to be a person who others would say, there's a humble man, there is a humble woman, someone who is filled with humility. Because when we are humble, then we can become obedient. We can do what God wants, even though against what we currently know. Can I just make this statement to you? You know, pride is a terrible decision maker. Pride is what got us into this mess that we call life and this world with Adam and Eve in the garden. Why did they eat from the, from the tree? The Bible says because it was of pride. The devil tricked them to say, hey, listen, it's not good enough what God has created for you. You can be just like God. Pride entered in and we've ended up today because of a proud spirit. Now, some of us are thinking, you know what? I, I love this message because my wife needs to hear this or my husband needs to hear this. Yeah, please go for it, Pastor Rich. Listen, you always know when a spirit of pride is lurking when you don't think this message is for you. When you're sitting there going, oh, I'm so glad he's preaching this because everyone else needs to hear this, but not me. Hey, listen, we've all got areas of our life where we need God to help us and to move us forward. Listen, it's humility that makes room for miracles. I want you to see this point. Psalm chapter 10, verse 4, it says, In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. That's God. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. I don't want to be that person, friends. And do you know why it says there's no room for God? Because you can't teach someone something when they think they know it all. Now, let me just slow this down for a moment. Some of you are thinking, well, this is a nice, this is just a nice Christian message about being humble. Friends, no, no, this is a really important message. You know, it it's, hasn't been too long that, you know, I've, I've come across uh, uh, this certain individual and 
And, and, and this person, um, but they lost a lot of money with investments, like a lot money that they really could not afford to lose, to be honest. And it breaks my heart. And I know that there's many people who actually fall into that category. But the honest truth is, the Bible just told us then that the, pri the, the pr pride and a proud heart doesn't allow you to go and seek wisdom. And you know what? If this person and these other people had have told me or others what they were about to do, um, they, they would have quickly been told, I wouldn't do that if I was you. And, these would have, and, and they would have shown them some stats and they would have avoided losing a lot of hard-earned money if they just had spoken to some people. Why didn't they? Friends, that's what pride does. It doesn't allow you to speak to people. It, it tells you that you know it all. You don't need to talk to anybody. Yet, they made a bad decision. Pride is a really bad decision maker. You know, I'm noticing at the moment, you know, everyone's a political commentator all, all of a sudden. Everyone's on Facebook, everyone's on Instagram, everyone's got something to say about, about the, the political system and the politicians themselves. And, and listen, that's great. Everyone's got freedom of speech. But you know, I'm, I'm just wondering, you know what, is there any room that maybe you're wrong? Is it, could, could it possibly be that even what you've just written, could, is there any chance that you're wrong? And, and are you open to other people's opinions and, and advice? Because, friends, it goes down a very, very dark road. No, pride, pride is, is, it destroys families, friends. You know, I spoke to someone recently, and, and uh, apparently this person's got grandchildren, and I said, uh, you, mu you must love being a, grand, uh, a grandfather. And he said, well, the honest truth is I, ne I, ne I never get to see them. And I said, why not? He said, well, I, I, had, a, I had a fight with my daughter-in-law, and um, yeah, and I haven't had any contact with my son for the last, you know, five or six years. And I said, but what was the fight over? He said, I don't even remember. And I said, so why don't you just pick up the phone and just make it right so that you can see your grandkids? Oh, I would never do that. No, they can ring me. Friends, friend, don't, don't, don't be that person. How, how are you meant to thrive with your grandchildren and be involved in their life? if you just won't pick up the phone and just make things right. Friends, that's what a proud heart does. No, that's not who we are going to be. We are gonna be people who gladly pick up the phone and say, I am sorry, how can we make this work? Ask people's advice. What do you think? This is what I'm about to do. We're gonna be people that are open. We're gonna be vulnerable like the Richmond Football Club was. We're not gonna be people who think they know it all. No, we're gonna be open. We're gonna be talking. We're gonna be talking to people about our dreams about our plans, about the vision for the future. What do you think about that? Now, don't get me wrong. It's not that we're open to everybody and, and anyone. No, no, no. But we're not going to be people who are afraid to open up and be humble and let's keep building a life that is thriving in Jesus' name. We need to give, be giving at least 18 people, should only have two or three, in your house a high five because this is what life's all about. I'm getting pretty excited about this. How much better would life be if we would just walk in humility? You know what? It brings hope. It brings healing. It brings health. Some of us remember the story of Naaman. He was a guy that had leprosy and, uh, and he was a great warrior. And a little girl says to him, you know, I know that you can't get the help that you need here in this city. But, you know, back in my hometown, you know what? There is a big God there and he can help you. You know, right there, he could have said, my God's better than your God. But he actually humbled himself and said, yeah, where is this God? Where can I find him? Well, he's, he's in Israel. And so he goes, and apparently there's a prophet there called Elijah. And, and, and so he goes to visit Elijah the prophet, and Elijah the prophet doesn't even come out to meet the guy. He sends his servant, and the servant tells him, go wash yourself seven times in a river. And he's so offended by this. What? I can't believe you didn't come out and wave your hand all over me. I can't believe you didn't even come and talk to me. You've sent out your servant. And, and on top of all that, you're telling me to wash in the dirtiest river in the region. You know, the rivers back home are much cleaner than the Jordan. Pride, pride, pride. But in all of that, he humbled himself and he said, all right. So he goes down to the river, humbles himself, ignores the fact that he was so grossly offended. And he comes up out of the water, having washed himself seven times, completely healed. I wonder 
what God is saying to you through other people, through his word, through this message that I know is grating you. It's like, oh, I don't want to hear this. This is offending me. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But what would happen if you acted on it? What would happen if you just humbled yourself and said, you know what? I'm going to let some people speak into my marriage. Maybe the way my parents raised me wasn't perfect. And if I keep doing this to my partner, it's going to really hurt him or her. No, no, I'm going to do things differently. And I'm going to humble myself. I wonder what miracle is waiting for you on the other end of your humility. I'm going to say that again. I wonder what miracle is waiting for you at the other end of your humility. Come on, friends. Let's not waste this Sunday. Let's not waste a day. Humble yourself. I wonder if we could be the sort of person that walks around and says, God, I'm open. Send anybody. Like, not anyone, but God, I'm open to you. I'm not a closed book. Like, I want to grow. I want to learn. I'm willing to lay down anything that is not helping me or my family go forward. And if you want to be that person, then I'm praying today is your day. You know, we've got some, some men in our church who have done this course called Love After Marriage. And, you know, for most guys, when the wife says, come on, honey, I really want to do this marriage course, most guys are like, ah, what am I going to learn? Ah, you go, I don't want to. But no, 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 we've had a whole lot of guys go through this and lo and behold, they've grown. I'm thinking of one guy in particular. He went kicking and screaming, to be honest, and it was a bit awkward for him, but there was, there's this moment in this course where, where you've got to be vulnerable, and he was vulnerable. And some great men began to speak into this guy's life. And tears started flowing down his face. That man today, friends, is a different man. His wife says, I don't know who he is. How did that miracle happen? He humbled himself. He didn't really want to go, but he went. And today, he's a different man and everyone can see it. Everybody will testify. Hey, listen, come on. Proud people don't get very far. We want to thrive while well, we need to humble ourselves. I'll, I'll often catch up with pastors and, and, you know, it shocks me often how they don't ask me a question about anything. All they do is talk about themselves, yet I've got so many things to say to them that could really help them grow, but they don't ask. All they do is talk about themselves and so they go home the exact same person. These are, these are people that I'm mentoring, by the way. Hey, I wonder... Here's a good question for you. Do you ask questions when you're in a conversation? Do you ever open up yourself and become a little bit vulnerable and say, hey, listen, you just talked about something. I don't really know how that works. Can you explain that to me? Or are you one of these people that pretends that you sort of know everything and then you walk away and you're no better? You haven't learned anything. You're not any wiser. Come on, let's not be that person. Do we want to thrive? We've got to stay humble. Is anyone getting something out of this? Hey, listen. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says something that is so powerful. I'm going to end with this. This is God speaking to his people. And he says, then, if my people, I like the if, because sometimes people just won't do this. And God knows that. So he says, if. He says, then, if my people who are called by my name will, here it comes, humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, he says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will restore their land. Hey, come on, some of us have lost some big things during this season. Some of you have lost your confidence. Some of you have lost finances. Some of you have lost intimacy. I don't know what you've lost, but God wants to restore it and bring it back into your life. But friends, that verse starts with humility because without humility, you won't pray. And without humility, you won't seek his face. And without humility, you won't turn from your wicked ways. None of those things are possible unless you decide first to humble yourself. And when you decide to humble yourself, everything just flows. And what's the ultimate result? God will restore your land, your marriage, your confidence, your hope, your vision. What is it that you're that you feel like you've lost. God wants to restore it. Friends, maybe you're watching for the very first time and you're thinking, wow, I'd love some areas of my life to be restored. Friend, for you, if, you, if, you've, if you've just started watching, friends, it all starts with humility by saying, Jesus, I need you in my life. Wow, that's humble. Jesus, I can't do life without you. That's humble. And what about this one? Jesus, 
I need you to get me into heaven. Friends, that's humble. And if you will pray a very simple prayer, Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of all my sin. I wanna begin a relationship with you that lasts for all eternity. Friends, if you will pray that prayer, God will see your humble heart and He's gonna come in. He's gonna fill you with His peace, His love, His joy, give you some hope and restore your land. And for those of us who've prayed that prayer many, many times or many, many years ago, hey, for us today, come on, let's go deeper in our humility, deeper. Lord Jesus, I need more wisdom. Lord Jesus, I need your word. Come on, let's never listen to a message like this and say, yeah, I wonder what's gonna be said today that I don't already know. No, 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 let's not have that spirit. Let's, Holy Spirit, I'm open to you. And even though the pastor's talking about X, you can be talking to me about Y. Friends, come on, let's, let's keep a humble heart and let's thrive all the way through this year, going into next year. And to thrive, we need to stay humble. God bless you guys. Have an amazing day in Jesus' name. Wow. What an amazing word from Pastor Richard. I think you'd agree, wouldn't you? So good, bro. It's incredible. Such an awesome word. You know what? I've really been enjoying uh, this new series. I'm only two weeks in um, and what it means to thrive rather than survive. And I'm just really encouraged and looking forward to being able to tune in over the next couple of weeks to hear more about the series. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Hey, and if you made that decision today to let Jesus into your life, I want to encourage you that, hey, that was the greatest decision. Ben, can we give these guys a round of applause? Absolutely incredible. Well done. But we would love to connect with you. And the best way you can do that is head to our Facebook page, send us a message and someone will be in contact with you. Well, we pray that you have an amazing week and we look forward to seeing you at Lifehouse Online next week. Take care.
dancing now. 